All right, welcome everyone. It looks like the numbers have slowed down. So it looks like most of the, the folks who are joining us this, this evening or afternoon, depending on where you are, are here in the room. Uh, we are so thrilled and excited to be with you. Uh, my name is Danielle Wells. I'm one of the senior or associate directors. I always forget my title for some reason. I'm one of the associate directors of admission at Boston College. I am part of a trio of individuals uh, within our office that help to coordinate the QuestBridge process. Uh, and so I will turn it over to my colleague, Lauren, and allow her to introduce herself to you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. My name is Lauren Riley. I'm a Senior Assistant Director of Admission, um, and I get to work with Danielle, and I will pass it to Cindy um, on the QuestBridge team. So we're excited to chat with you tonight. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. My name is Cindy Cordova, and I'm a Senior Assistant Director also supporting the QuestBridge team within the Admissions Office at BC. Thanks so much for being here. All right, well, to get us started, um, the way we're gonna actually have this all play out tonight is that we have three fabulous students who you might see on our screen. And we really wanna use the first half of our time together for you to get a better idea about Boston College um, and our community. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask, Cindy and I are gonna ask our students a few questions, but while we're asking them questions, we definitely encourage you to throw any questions that you might have for them in the chat. We always say, or excuse me, in the Q&A, tab there on the bottom, you'll see that, that Q&A option. Um, we always say that our current students are the real experts about Boston College, so take advantage of the fact that we have them here. You can pick their brains. Um, and then after we do this question and answer portion, we will make sure to go over the application process um, and financial aid at the end. But to kick us off, um, why don't we start with Jen? Do you want to start us off with introducing yourself? Absolutely, I'd love to. Thank you so much, Lauren. Welcome, everyone. So happy to have you here. Uh, my name is Jen Lozano. I am currently a junior, originally from Orlando, Florida. I'm studying applied psychology and human development in the Lynch School of Education and Human Development, and I have a double major in political science uh, in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. Um, and I've been involved in SAP in a couple of different ways, but with Crestridge specifically, I was actually helping to develop this first class. I helped start off like the Facebook group and we made it like a group me to kind of get students that were accepted into this first class interacting with one another. Um, so I'm just here serving as another like student voice at BC and happy to answer any questions. All right, Julia, do you wanna go next? Sure, my name is Julia and my pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm a first year student, so I'm pretty close in age to all of you. I'm studying political science right now, hoping to minor in African and African diaspora studies. My hometown is also in Florida, Ocala, Florida, and my connection to QuestBridge is that I was part of the first choral whore at BC. And Tyler, bring us home. <laughs> hey everyone, my name is Tyler, if it wasn't obvious enough. Um, my pronouns are he, him, el, and my class year is the class of 2023, so I'm a current junior studying political science and film studies as a double major while on the pre-law track. Um, it is no coincidence that like all of us are from Florida. I'm from West Palm Beach, Florida, alongside Jen and Julia. But um, I guess Florida kids love BC. Um, alongside that, my uh, connection to Questbridge is that I'm also the co-founder and president of the chapter this year. It, it's actually BC's first year having Questbridge as a official partner. So um, I'm excited to help lead the charge on that. And hopefully I can meet many of you guys as the chapter grows throughout the years. Awesome, thanks friends. All right, well, to get us started, I wanna ask you a question about Boston College's location. So Boston College, we're pretty fortunate to be half located in the city of Boston, right? And half located in Newton, Massachusetts. So we definitely get this campus feel, which you might be able to see in my background here. Um, but you also have great access to the city. So can we talk a little bit about how you utilize the city of Boston um, versus what campus life is like and just the way those interact? Whoever wants to start us off. Yeah, I can go ahead and start us off. Um, so we're in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, which is this lovely suburb. Um, it's really only six miles outside of the city which is honestly really nice because that means it'll take anywhere from 25 to 45 minutes on our public transportation system. So it's the MBTA or the T to get into the system or to get into the system, to get into the city. Um, so it's honestly really convenient and we have stops all around our campus as well. Obviously freshman fall, 
coming from Florida that didn't really have that lovely tra uh, public transportation. I didn't go into the city as much, but I'd say since then I've definitely gone much more. Now I go like once every other week. Um, it's relatively affordable to get into the city through public transportation or through Uber and Lyft options as well. Um, or if like any of your friends have a car. Um, and I'd say I go into the city much more for like leisure. Um, so like for concerts, especially for food. Um, we also have museums that students get free tickets to. So I remember one day last spring, I didn't have class on Fridays. Um, so I actually went to the Museum of Fine Arts on my own. It was a big girl moment for me um, to take the tree all by myself, walk around all by myself. And it was just such a lovely day. Um, and to have the ability to do that for free was really cool too. I think I can go next in saying that Boston has a lot of good food. Um, I highly recommend going out into the city at some point, uh, one time or another during, sorry, I my dog's acting up a little bit, um, but I recommend going out into the city at one point or another, like going to Newberry Street, going to the South End, the North End. Um, there's a lot of diversity in Boston um, in contrast, like what they show in gangster movies. There's the MFA, the ICA, and a ton of different museums that you can go to to, I guess, like enrich, enrich yourself within the culture of Boston and the widespread global community that it's attached to. Um, when it comes to like academic subjects, a lot of the arts courses at BC heavily encourage you to go out into the city and immerse yourself within different types of communities, programs, and uh, museums offered all throughout the city. And it's really a convenient location for you to get a taste of everything around you. Yeah, um, I don't have much to say as the first year, but um, for me, I'm in Pulse, which is a special program where you do community service as part of your grade and your academics. So I go into the city and out using the T quite often. So I find that it's pretty easy. I didn't grow up with public transportation, AKA Florida. Um, so it, it you adapt pretty quickly. And Boston College is in this unique location right in between the suburbs and the city. And that's why I listed it personally. I listed it so high on my Questbridge ranking because I really wanted that good location where there's the opportunities of the city, but the calm attitude of the suburbs. Awesome. All right, Cindy, you wanna take us off to the next question? Yeah, absolutely. So here at Boston College, we do have four academic divisions. And when you apply to BC, you might have noticed that you're selecting one out of the four academic divisions. And so everyone's journey can look a little bit different or maybe similar. Um, at the end of the day, you also have a core curriculum and that, and that allows you to take classes outside of your major, very interdisciplinary. Um, it's also a great way to explore. So you can take more than a few classes across different divisions, across different programs. And that's one way how students find their majors or minors, double majors, or even changing their program altogether. So I was wondering if the students could roll back the tape uh, to four years ago or your time um, as you were thinking about um, being a senior in high school, do you envision your academic pathway to be what it is today or have there been any surprises for you academically? And also who has helped you along the way to figure out what it is that you are studying right now? Who would like to start? I can start um, when it comes to, I guess, me four years ago in high school as like a high school junior and a high school senior, I was envisioning myself going to law school. Um, however, the core curriculum at BC definitely changed my mind or added extra perspective to it. Um, I no longer wanted to go into a pre-professional program just because I was taking such a large breadth of courses within the core curriculum. And I kind of wanted to exercise that left side of my brain that stimulated the creativity in me. And I decided to go further into film studies because film. I had to take a film course my freshman year. And that's something that kind of like triggered that creative part of my mind. And I do feel like while taking the core within uh, the Morsi uh, College of Arts and Sciences, you're going to come across a lot of different fields and you might become interested 
in um, a different field that you weren't expecting to be interested in. At least that was my experience. And I definitely think that I've gotten a lot of help along the way. Um, kind of similar to Tyler, I did apply into Boston College as a political science major and I applied pre-law as well, um, but I had never heard of applied psychology, never thought I'd go into like the education school or anything like that. Um, and I think it's from like different mentorships, whether that's inside a classroom or like with another student or things like that. So I heard about the applied psychology program through another student, an upperclassman in one of the clubs I was in actually. Um, and they encouraged me because they talked about certain classes that they were taking that sounded super interesting. And then when I went to talk into uh, an advisor, so like a faculty within the school, they were honestly super encouraging um, and like sat down with me, wrote out like an outline of what a four year plan would look like to see if I could like manage to do the two majors and everything. And they want you to be able to kind of step outside of your comfort zone and like challenge yourself and try different things. They don't want to just like be like, no, just stick to this one thing. Like that's better off. I've never heard of that, like be a thing in general. Um, there's always that encouragement to, again, seek your interest and challenge yourself by taking different classes and things like that. So I think like having those mentors again, inside a classroom, among your peers, outside of classroom has definitely been helpful to kind of find my academic path. Yeah, so for me, thinking back to being a senior was not that long ago, and I remember being um, exactly where you are right now, trying to decide uh, where I wanted to rank colleges, how I was going to rank them, and like wanting to change it last minute, wanting to alter it last minute, but ultimately, I ranked BC number two, just so everybody knows, uh, because of the location, primarily because Boston is a great city with so many great opportunities and BC particularly has so many opportunities that I found really helpful as a first year. So the AHANA program, which is um, African Hispanic, AHANA, <laughs> African Hispanic, Native American and Asian and Plus is a great resource for students on campus. There's several other programs that you can join called there's Sisters Let's Talk. So that's specifically for black women on campus. There's so many resources that I found really helpful to combine with my academics and getting through everything, altering uh, your environment as a senior. But that's why I chose BC specifically. I think when you're a senior, it's really important to think about where you wanna be as a first year specifically. Like if you're thinking about law school, that might change very easily. And going to a school that has a lot of opportunities is really key, at least what I had in my experience. As far as academics so far, professors are a really great resource at BC in particular. I found that the class size is really great for getting to know your professors. So it's not too big like some other universities, but it's not too small. So you really get to form those uh, personal relationships with your professors, which is a great resource just for emotional support or academic support. A great segue to talk about campus culture and community at BC. So I was wondering if, if you have any words that come to mind when you want to describe the BC community to others. And also, how have you yourself found community at BC? I think um, the first thing that came to mind, there are so many like ways I could describe it, but I think reflective is such a big one. Um, and I think you see that again in so many different ways among the community. I'd say like the most direct way that I saw it freshman year was in conversation with like other first year students and kind of that's how I met a lot of people is by talking about kind of their backgrounds, where they're coming from, their experiences and reflecting on like how they got to where they are now. So freshman year, how they got to where they like to BC in general. And then I felt like that was the same way inside a classroom. I felt like especially first year professors really wanted to help us kind of think about, okay, how can we use the skills academically and socially that we learned in high school and then bring them into a classroom. Um, and I think that's definitely part of like the Jesuit values that um, are here at BC. And um, I think connecting that to um, like how I found my community, I think that was the biggest thing is just realizing that everyone is coming from these different backgrounds and like wants to make friends. And so just like trying to remind myself that and reminding myself that people are willing to have these conversations and like reflect on where they've been and where they are now and how that like intersects with other people was super helpful.
What about others? Any words that come to mind to describe the BC community and also how have you gotten involved or found your, your community here at BC? I think for me, uh, finding community at BC is definitely a two-way street. It's not something you can fall into easily. You kind of need to put yourself out there and organizations, clubs, different communities on campus will reach back out to you if you put your hand out there. Um, personally, in my experience, I haven't found any like communities within the residence halls I live in, but other students have had that experience. I personally found my family, my communities on campus through the clubs and organizations I'm in, like the mock trial, Questbridge community, um, for Boston, uh, alongside like uh, many other clubs on campus, you kind of build bonds with the people who share these same interests as you. And it's not only like this attaching you to them, but like you get to meet these people and you get to know them and you know, like the character beyond the club. And that kind of like helps you develop a personal sense of identity and relationship in the context of like your larger BC community. Um, do you have something you want to add or do you want me? Yeah, okay, go yeah. for it. Um, for me, I find that a good word to describe BC's community is interdisciplinary, so not just academics, like the community is very um, mixed. So for me, my experience, I'm in the MLE, which is the Multicultural Learning Experience, which is a special dorm dedicated to, um, it's mostly Ahana students, but people who are interested in immersing themselves in a diverse environment and coming back to that at the end of the day has been a really good relief for me. Um, going to my classes, honestly, sometimes you're the only person of color in a room, but when you go back to the MLE, at least for me, it's a really nice comfort to have that community that I can always come back to and have like activities with, even though they might not be in my classes or have my major per se. So that's where I found my community as far as the classes and everything. You definitely have a different atmosphere in classes versus your dorm. So like when you're in classes, it's nice to meet people who have the same interests as you and want to align with like the same career path as you. But definitely, um, I think you do form different groups within campus, but it's nice to finally like get people that align with your interests in different facets. Awesome. All right, so we, y'all touched on great resources. So we're gonna move to the Jesuit mission and Jen, you already kind of teased this question already. Uh, so we're on the same wavelength, but Boston College um, is a Jesuit school. And as you've been doing your research, if you have, you might've heard about that. And if you haven't yet, we are here to talk about um, what it means to be a Jesuit school with you. Uh, we are only one of two Catholic schools and only Jesuit school when it comes to the partner schools. And there sometimes seems to be this misconception that you have to be Catholic to apply or to be a student here at Boston College, but that's definitely not um, what that means. And that's not what the Jesuit value, value really means, right? We want to make sure that we're encouraging students to be reflective and to think about what brings them joy and what they're good at uh, and what the world really needs them to be, right? Those are three questions that we talk about a lot. Can you, can the three of you um, or two of you, whoever wants to add, um, talk a little bit about what the Jesuit nature of Boston College means to you, how you see that on campus in your community? Feel free to just, if two of you, one or two of you want to do it, and then we'll go to the questions because we do have some great questions coming in. Yeah, I can start off since I like teased it a little <laughs> bit. Um, so I'd say reflection is definitely like a big part of the Jesuit mission. Um, I'd say another big part that you really see like embodied in the BC community is this idea of men and women for and with others or people with others. Um, and basically that comes down to being someone that doesn't just want to like create change for themselves and kind of seek their own path and things like that, but really be a present member of like their community and greater society and things like that. And I think you see that in a couple of different ways at BC. Um, just like a quick statistic, over 85% of students participate in some sort of volunteer community service at their time during their time at BC, and that's not a requirement at all. Um, so Pulse is like an example of that, which is that placement um, where you go into the city and you do some service or in the greater Boston area. Um, we have a lot of other clubs and organizations that do that, and even classes that really encourage that kind of service component. Um, and I think that's really amazing, and people just want to do that with their free time and for no like requirement for no payment or anything like that, it's just wanting to learn more about 
the world around them, the people around them, and kind of be there for and with others. Great. All right, we can actually transition to, that was a great job, Jen. So let's transition to the questions that we have um, that y'all have started to send us. So thank you for sending us. Um, Tyler, I know you have to go soon, but let's, can we start off with you then? Can you talk about what the typical day um, looks like for a Boston College student? How would you describe like your typical day? Um, I, I would say I'm definitely not a typical Boston College student. Mm -hmm. I currently juggle two jobs on campus. So I kind of work double shifts most days and I have um, either one class uh, on Tuesdays and Fridays and three classes on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Um, but obviously that is subject to change a lot depending on what courses you take. I'm just taking courses that I feel like were tailored to my own personal schedule and they've kind of been working well for me. Um, it is a very busy day since I have those two double shifts, but I'm also getting, getting paper really. Um, outside of that, I also have a lot of club meetings in between those classes and in between those uh, two occupations that I have on campus. And all of that pretty much keeps me busy all day. But at night, I still have time to get work done and like get my classwork done for some of my classes. I even have time to get it done during my shifts at work. Um, I would say be careful with what jobs you pick on campus. Pick a library job or a job that doesn't get too much uh, student circulation and you'll have time to like read whatever text you have for class or get your chem and bio work done. Um, outside of that, I do have like the additional time span to, to meet with friends, to grab lunch with someone and to meet with professors during their office hours. So I'd say like you are capable of having a strong schedule if you can take care of it. Great, thank you, Tyler. Jen, I'm gonna ask you the next question here on the chat. So there's a question about diversity on campus and maybe alongside that, can you talk about some of those resources for students from diverse backgrounds? Yeah, of course I'd love to. Um, so in general, I know Julia talked about the Ohana community. So that makes up about 33% of the student body here. Um, and so I think coming from Florida, I went to a really, really large public high school. And so in terms of like racial diversity, I'd say it was definitely a little bit less just from my personal hometown, but I know um, my roommate right now, she went to a small Augustinian private school in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So the level of racial diversity is much more here, but I'd say you also see diversity in so many different ways too. Um, and again, I talked about this a lot. People are coming from so many different backgrounds, having different experiences. And I think those rich conversations really teach each other a lot about um, diversity and kind of what that means. And then tying it back to resources, again, Julia was talking a little bit about um, the Theo Bowman Ahanan Intercultural Center. So we also call it the BAIC. Um, and that is kind of like an office and resource center that we have for Ahana students. Um, they offer so many amazing programs. They offer retreats. Um, you're paired with kind of a mentor or advisor as well, just to have that kind of one-on-one uh, -on -one conversation. Um, they host different like country, cultural lunches. So I know for like Hispanic Heritage Month, um, they had a bunch of different things and they also have like an end of the month celebration, which I'm excited to go to. Um, it's always nice to kind of see people that look like you um, and just kind of can celebrate your culture uh, and your heritage in the same way or in similar ways or even in different ways too. Um, obviously other students are invited to join as well. Another big resource that, that we do have on campus um, I'd say is like the Learning to Learn office, um, which uh, provides services and like mentorship again and different retreat programs and things like that for first generation students and students coming from low income backgrounds as well. Um, so again, there's like a wide array of resources and people that are there to facilitate these important conversations about diversity um, to provide like a safe and welcoming space for you um, to just kind of hang out, meet new people, things like that as well. Awesome. All right, Julie, I'm going to throw this one to you here. Um, all of these students who are joining us are getting ready to go through the college process, right? When it comes to the, whether they're search, whether they started their applications, whatever it is, considering you were in their shoes so recently, do you have a piece of advice that you would give the students, the students listening um, as they go through this college search process and application process? 
Yeah, definitely. Um, when I was doing the ranking myself and I was like, which college do I want to rank number two? Which one do I want to do number seven? I thought way too much about it for the longest time. But when it comes down to it, you will match or get into the school that is meant for you. So I didn't expect to get into BC. I honestly was really shocked. My college reaction was pretty, pretty shocked. <laughs> um, I, I think I underestimated myself. Um, so definitely do not underestimate yourself. You definitely can do it. You're here for a reason and you will potentially be at BC for a reason. So if BC is the school for you, you will end up here. You will end up at the school that it's for you. You don't have to worry about it so much. Every decision is not going to massively change the course of your life as I thought it was. Um, so definitely just don't think about it as much as you are probably right now. Perfect life advice. Thank you, Jalia. I'm going to turn it over to Tyler. I know you have to go soon, but I wanted to give you the time to share any words of encouragement or advice for the students as they go through this process before you head out. Honestly, I think Jalia took the words right out of my mouth, but um, I would say as my like final statement before I go, I think all of you are destined for greatness. All of you have made it to this information session and that's further than most students, you know, across the entire US. You guys are focused, you guys are driven, and I know that you guys are gonna make it somewhere that you that deserves you as much as you deserve that location. And if BC is that place, then we plan to welcome you all with open arms. Awesome. Thank you, Tyler, for being here. We'll share Tyler's contact information at the end of this information session. And then Jen and Julia, I know you're going to stick around for a few more questions here. Uh, so again, thank, thank you so much, Tyler, for stopping by. Tyler. It was great meeting everyone. <laughs> Take care. All right, so um, we have another fun question here about college traditions. And I know this is one of my favorite questions. So I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit more about traditions on campus, anything else that you also like to do in the city of Boston. Um, so just let's see what comes up for you as you think about those questions. Yeah, I think um, there's a lot of traditions here at Boston College. And I think that was a big reason when I was like, Looking into BC, I fell in love with it because I really thought it tied the community together. Um, one thing that I am looking forward to this upcoming Monday, um, it's kind of a modified version of what Marathon Monday usually is. So Boston College um, on Commonwealth Avenue, which is this like road that falls right in front of Main Gate and in front of our entire campus, um, it's at mile marker 21 of the Boston Marathon. So this usually happens every year on Patriots Day in April um, because of COVID-19, we are actually having tw like 2021 Boston Marathon this Monday, so October 11th. So I'm getting two Marathon Mondays in this school year, which I'm so excited about, and so is the entire student body. But I think that's a really cool one because it really ties the BC community to the greater Boston community. You have students, faculty and staff that will run in the race and students literally wake up at the crack of dawn to line up and cheer on students, um, faculty, staff and other members of the Boston community running the race. So I think that's a, a really, really fun one um, that you see like the spirit of Boston come alive. Awesome, all right. Oh, Julia, do you have something you want to add? I was going to say mine is a little bit more um, untraditional. I think because I haven't experienced the full year yet, my um, sort of tradition of BC that I enjoy is how much service people do on campus. So for me, I'm not Jesuit personally, but the mission of Jesuit serving others really aligns with what I want to do with my life just and professional career and just in general. So I find that uh, the heavy amount of involvement that people have with their communities is like sort of an unsaid tradition at BC. So I definitely think that's my favorite so far. That's a great answer. I love that. Uh, all right. We have a question about the how competitive is the academic environment between students at BC? Um, just hearing that question, what are your initial reflections? Do I want to start us off? I described the academic environment. Yeah, Jen, I see you're getting yeah, ready to talk. Sure. Um, <laughs> I think that I was actually surprised to find 
that it was more collaborative than competitive within the classroom. Um, and I think that has to do with kind of the type of student that comes to BC as well as the type of atmosphere that is built in a classroom because it's like an average class size of anywhere from 25 to like 30 students. Um, I think that really helps create like a very student led discussion type of style where students are able to kind of get to know one another. And then the professors really facilitate um, like a sort of environment that gives students agency and doesn't necessarily focus on, okay, I need to do better than the person sitting next to me, but how can we kind of collaborate and work together to really understand what's going on in this class or really um, understand uh, what like the question being asked is or things like that. Yeah, I would say I remember in high school people being like, oh, what did you get on this paper? Oh, what did you get on the test? That does not happen at BC, at least in my experience so far. People are much more concerned with the content and your retention of it rather than a grade that you're assigned. It's not as competitive or superficial as it might be in your high school, at least it wasn't mine. I find though that the uh, academic environment is actually less competitive, at least in my experience, than the clubs and the student involvement because so many people are involved in clubs that when you apply, there's a lot of competition there, but when it comes to academics, it's definitely focused uh, more on your personal growth and your retention of whatever subject that you're discussing. Great. You both have shared so many great resources and I know I gave Tyler the opportunity to wrap up with a few words of encouragement and advice. I'm wondering if there's anything else that's coming up for you that you wanna tell our students who are curious, are also maybe nervous, who knows, a range of emotions, right? Thinking about this process. And so, um, but you're real students here, you've made it and, and you know, Julia, you just went through the QuestBridge National College match process, you know, Jen, you are thriving here at BC and you've gotten so involved. So anyway, any any advice that you have for the students today, any words of encouragement, I think will go a long way. Yeah, I can, I can start off. I think that I was also an orientation leader this summer. Um, so I've like, seeing like a new class come in, which is really, really cool. And just in talking to them and their experiences about like how stressful it was and applying and everything. I think the biggest thing um, that they realize is that they just wish someone would tell them to just take a breath, like take a pause and realize how much you have accomplished so far to get where you are now. And like understand that it has been a really tough year and a half. Um, so like give yourself that credit for everything you have done since then and before then um, and all the work you're like already trying to do kind of like Tyler was saying to maybe apply to BC or to any other like Questbridge program in general um, and enjoy like your junior and senior year. Um, you you will enjoy wherever you will get into. I never imagined myself coming to Boston College um, and I absolutely love it here. And even though like it sounds cheesy and whatever, you will end up where you're meant to end up um, and you will make the most of wherever you end up. You will find your like niche group, your niche community and things like that. So take a breath, take a step back and like pat yourself on the back. Yeah, definitely. My advice would be as far as when I was writing the QuestBridge essays, I was so concerned with specifics. I was concerned with my wording, whether or not I was coming across as my authentic self. I think again, reiterating my earlier point, don't think about it too much. What you're trying to portray to the admissions office will come through. They will understand who you are in that essay. Whatever you're presenting as, quest, as a QuestBridge student, they're going to consider that. And you don't have to worry so much about getting the right point across or getting every single detail exact or worrying about a certain way that you phrase a sentence like those little details do not matter as much as you think they may and for me I never thought that I would get into Questbridge because I gotta be in a class I thought I wouldn't get it because of that you don't have to worry about the little stuff like that give yourself a pat on the back if you gotta be you gotta be you did it you got through it that's the most important thing and definitely give yourself credit because I still have trouble with that. I think every college student probably has trouble with that. But give yourself some credit. You're already here and whether or not you get in, you're still valid. You'll still end up where you're meant to be and you will do great things in life. 
couldn't have said it better. You're both hired as my, as my personal life coaches. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <point> exactly. <laughs> Great advice. If you don't mind adding your email addresses to the chat and that way our students can reach out to you with any further questions. I know there's so many questions that came through the Q&A today. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, we do want to transition to talk a little bit more about the application process. Um, and also the opportunities um, through the match and after the match, um, or if you're not going through the match process. So I'm gonna turn it over to our colleague, Danielle Wells here. Um, and um, again, thank you, Jen. Thank you, Jalia, so much uh, for being here today and for sharing your BC story and your journey thus far. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cindy. And once again, thank you to Julia, Jen, and, and Tyler, who has, who has left us for the moment. Um, but we certainly value our students' uh, thoughts and impressions and, and perspectives because they're the one who lives this experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and so I definitely encourage you, if there are additional student-oriented questions, we're going to provide you with some additional contact information later, uh, but certainly reach out to any of the three of them um, because I think that they will certainly be valuable resources for you. So now we're going to make the transition to talk about a little bit more about nuts and bolts uh, or the nuts and bolts elements of the, the process. So right now you are all kind of in this waiting stage, right? You're, you're waiting to hear whether or not you have been selected as a QuestBridge finalist. And we are all keeping our fingers crossed for you that you receive good news on October 19th. And then once October 19th comes, everything kind of happens very quickly. So the first process is that once the QuestBridge has alerted all of you that you are finalists, you already have submitted your rank, rank list to them. They that will then forward along your application information to all of the partner schools that you have on your rank list. So we receive your, your application from QuestBridge. We then have a, a system where we will upload your application and that will generate what we call a credentials email. So it will be an email that will be sent to you saying, you know, we understand that you've applied to Boston College <clears throat> through the National College Match. Um, this is information. This is how you connect to your applicant status portal. Your applicant status portal is where you will see all of the documents that we have received and any outstanding documents. But usually with QuestBridge Match applicants, there are no outstanding documents because QuestBridge has already collated all of the information in their application package. So that just automatically gets sent to us. The one outstanding piece, or the, I guess the one additional piece, and some of the partner schools will require some additional um, information from those who are applying through the match. For Boston College, this is the BC QuestBridge questionnaire. Um, so the BC QuestBridge questionnaire essentially replicates some questions that we ask through our common application. We're just trying to get a sense of, of some information from you, particularly important to us, are which academic divisions or which of the four academic divisions you're planning on applying to. Um, and then you can indicate a major, you can indicate if you'd like a pre-med concentration or not. And then the other big piece to that is that we are requiring all of QuestBridge match applicants um, to fill out the Boston College supplemental essay. So hopefully one of my colleagues um, can drop that link in the chat. We definitely encourage you, whether or not you think you wanna apply through the match or you're gonna plan on applying through Boston College through another means, um, we definitely encourage you to start working on that uh, earlier and to get a head start because that'll certainly make the process, for, especially for those of you who are applying through the match, the process of filling out that QuestBridge questionnaire a lot easier if you already have your, your BC supplemental essay all ready to go. So once, all of your documents have been received. We received the Boston College QuestBridge questionnaire. Your application is officially ready to be reviewed. And so we have 19 admissions counselors on staff, uh, plus one of our, uh, our vice president of enrollment management who likes to still stay involved and still likes to read applications. Um, and all of us will then take uh, a cohort of the students who have applied for the match and read their applications. We then will meet as a group, myself, my colleague, Ryan, Lauren, and Cindy, and the three of us will serve as the QuestBridge committee. Um, and we oftentimes will meet with our director of admission as well. And the four of us will go through the students who have applied, we'll have conversations about it, and then we will figure out the cohort of students that we would like to admit for the year. You will be notified for those of you who, um, we will send our list of students that we would like to admit to QuestBridge. 
QuestBridge will then notify you on December 1st. So they will let you know if you have a matched with an institution um, and if so, which one. The goal behind QuestBridge is to have you match with the highest ranked school on your list. And they do provide you with an opportunity to amend your list uh, between when you've already submitted it and when you hear about your final match. But their goal is to always to try and pair you up with the highest ranked school on your list. So if your number one ranked school is is Boston College and we have you on our list, that's gonna be a match. If your number rank, one ranked school might be say uh, Notre Dame and then Boston College is number two and maybe Notre Dame doesn't have you on their list but Boston College does, well then you'll get matched up with BC. So the, the goal is again, to have you match with your highest ranked school. That's why it's important for those, those rank lists of your 12 schools um, or your up to 12 schools for you to think carefully about which is the school that you feel is, is the strongest fit for you or which is the school that you would most likely want to attend um, because that will certainly uh, play a role in, in where you might match with an institution. Understand that we do not have access to your rank list. So we never know if we were ranked first on your list or 12th on your list or seventh on your list. Um, so no need to worry about that. They do not provide us with that information. And then additionally, for those students, uh, particularly who are, are DACA students or undocumented students, we will accept your application through the national, national college match process. Um, so we will consider um, those students for admission through the match. Once you hear from QuestBridge on December 1st, if you've matched with Boston College, we then will follow up with an email uh, letting you know that we have matched with you and that we will be submitting additional information to you. So you will receive a, an official acceptance email from us that will have nice confetti and be all exciting. Um, you will then receive an official letter of acceptance in the mail alongside with, we have a welcome brochure for students that contains a whole bunch of information that might be helpful to you and your family members to know about BC. It contains important dates, um, you know, next steps that you need to follow through in order to confirm your enrollment at Boston College. We do not require match students to submit a, a deposit, but they do have to fill out a form confirming that they are enrolling. Understand that the, the match process at Boston College is a binding process. So if you match with BC, you will be required to withdraw all of your other applications and you will not be able to submit any additional applications. So you essentially are, are the equivalent of an early decision acceptance, you are signed, sealed, and delivered to Boston College. We send you a very nice little sticker that you can put on your laptop or put in your refrigerator, or put on you know, the back of your notebook or whatever. So um, a match will have been made. So moving on next, um, <clears throat> that begs the question, well, then what do we look for within the National College match process? And then how do I end up being one of the students who are admitted? And to give you a sense as to what transpired last year, as, as you've already heard, last year was our first year, our first official year as a QuestBridge Partner School. And we really didn't know what to expect. We had no idea how many applications we would get. We hoped people would apply to us, but we had no idea. Um, and what ended up happening, we had just under a thousand applications for students through the match was 900 and, and change. Um, we went out with the goal of matching with 50 students. So we committed ourselves to taking 50 students through the national college match process. In terms of what we're looking for, um, a lot of the qualities that you all had in order to eventually go on and become a finalist are the same qualities that we're gonna be looking for within our match students. We definitely want to have a diverse cohort of students in terms of where students are coming from, in terms of their, their ethnicities or their cultural backgrounds, in terms of their uh, gender, um, in terms of their level of involvement and what they've done. So we certainly want to have a wide range of students and are not looking for one specific thing in all of our match um, applicants or all the students that we are going to admit through the match. We most certainly want students who are strong academic students. Um, and so that oftentimes within our review process, um, whether we're talking about applying through the National College Match or not, is a really big portion of our consideration uh, of admission to Boston College is that students that we feel um, confident that they can, can handle the workload, they best prepared themselves to handle the workload at BC. Um, but then they're also bringing you know, their unique talents and their unique traits to campus as well. So um, certainly we do look at, at both of those. 
Jalea kind of talked a little earlier about, you know, being nervous about having a B on our transcript and understand that we are not looking for perfection. We do not expect students to have straight A pluses across the board. And that those are the only types of students that we admit. We certainly admit a wide range of students, obviously students who have stronger academic performance, other ones going to have a stronger um, opportunity within our pool. But we also know that, you know, the last year and a half with COVID has been a hot mess. Um, and so we certainly recognize that students have been very, very challenged, both personally and also academically. Um, so again, you know, there's no expectation that like, you know, the student who has one stray B is, is automatically going to be disqualified from being considered or the student who even has a stray C is going to automatically be disqualified and, and not considered. You wouldn't become a finalist if you weren't a strong academic student, uh, but certainly we will we'll take that into consideration when we're considering students for it for the match. We also, it's important to know that, that we have students that are a good fit for us and really understand the mission of BC and really feel that Boston College is a strong match for them. And that's why the Boston College supplemental essay is going to be an important part. Um, as we've already talked about, or as you all are aware, there's lots of essay options within the the QuestBridge application. And a lot of the readers really love those essays because they felt that they gave them greater insight into who you are and your personality. Some of the short answer essays really kind of bring out your personal qualities and, and, and kind of who you are. But we really feel that the Boston College Supplemental Essay it's a strong way for us to determine, does the student really understand who we are as an institution? And do they really feel that they're a good fit for us and we're a good fit for them. And that's really what we're trying to, to get at through that supplemental essay. Um, the other piece, and someone had actually asked this question in, in the chat or in the Q&A um, while the student portion was going on. Uh, students will oftentimes ask me, is there a financial uh, threshold to what we will consider for the match? And we certainly want for the, those that we choose to match, those 50 students, we want them to be students coming from a significant amount of um, financial need or to have a significant amount of financial need. And so we will oftentimes look most cl clearly and most closely at those students who are close to a zero estimated family contribution. So the students who would be, what would be considered Pell eligible students are oftentimes going to be the students that are going to be most successful from a financial perspective um, in terms of match consideration. But as we'll see in a moment, um, certainly not that that's not the case for everyone. So when looking at the scholarship itself, the match scholarship details, there are certain things that all partner institutions, all 45 of us must agree to. We all have to agree that we are not going to have any parental contribution as part of the, the scholarship process, and that we agree that we will not be giving any loans to students. So that everyone agrees on. After that, it can vary from partner school to partner school. There are some partner schools that um, require work study and summer earnings. Boston College is one of them. Um, so students will be expected to contribute approximately $2,400. Work study will be um, work that you will have on campus and that is the money that you have the potential to earn. So that is a money that goes directly to a paycheck to you or in the form of a paycheck to you. And that's money that you should utilize for your expenses throughout the course of the year. And then the summer earnings is working over the summer, um, having a summer job, whether that's saving money to, you know, um, buy yourself some things during the school year, or whether that's saving money in order to, to travel to and from campus. We also give four years of on-campus housing. Um, so students sometimes will ask me, like, can I live off campus? Off campus is, is really expensive in the Boston area. And so we feel it's certainly a benefit to have students have their housing provided for them for all four years while they are on campus. Oftentimes students will ask, can I go abroad um, with the, the match scholarship? And yes, you can. What I would say is easiest is if you go abroad through a Boston College internal program. The reason why this is easiest is because a BC internal program, you can your financial aid carries with you. If you go through an external program, what that means is you are going through another university to go abroad, and therefore you are paying that other university their tuition. You can take your state scholarships with you, your federal scholarships with you, but you cannot take Boston College scholarship money. So really your best interest, unless you had some, some other resource financially, your best interest would be to go through a Boston College internal program if you wanted to do a study abroad. 
Also, as I kind of mentioned earlier, you know, summer earnings or work study, this is money that can be used for some expenses, including travel to and from campus. Boston College does not provide students with a voucher or with a plane ticket or with a bus ticket uh, to come to campus. We do take into consideration the expense of traveling to and from campus when we are evaluating your financial need. And so that is kind of built into the, the scholarship amount that's awarded to you. That is not a separate amount that's, that's handed to you or given to you in the form of a check. Um, so there was some confusion this past year. Again, it was our first year. Um, so we needed to be more clear with students about, about this. Certainly got a lot of conversation and questions from students, but wanted to make sure that you were all aware of that upfront. Lastly, uh, it is a Massachusetts state law that requires all students to have health insurance. And so that has to be either through their parents' insurance or through another plan. Some students are coming from states where the state will continue to, to provide health insurance for a student if they're a full-time college student. Um, if a student is not covered by a parental plan or their home state plan, BC will certainly work with the students to secure a plan and to secure funding uh, for insurance through a combination of loans and or grants. And that would really be a conversation um, to have with your financial aid counselor when it comes to that time. So, Unfortunately, not everybody's not everybody's going to match with Boston College. As I said, we you know had fifty match students that, that we we took in this year, and certainly um, that could be disappointing. But understand that Boston College still will take students outside of the match process, either through our regular decision application process or through our early decision two application process. So this year we had fifty students who came in through the match. We had another fifty to sixty students who came in outside of the match. So there's still this opportunity for you to enroll at Boston College, even if you are not one of the fifty that is selected for the match process. So if you are matched with another partner school, QuestBridge will let us know and we will automatically withdraw your application. So if you apply to BC and you apply to other match schools and you get matched with another institution, you don't need to worry about that because we will automatically withdraw your application. If you do not match with BC, your application will automatically move to regular decision with the option for those of you who are really interested in BC, you can request to have your application move to early decision too you will receive an applicant verification form that will require you to verify that you would like to have your application move to regular decision or to request to have your application move to early decision too. Or if you no longer have an interest in Boston College, you can simply have your application withdrawn through that applicant verification form or through emailing our admission office and letting us know that you would like to be withdrawn. And as I already said, we, we typically do have several admits outside of the match. So BC is one of 21 private schools that are both need blind in the admissions process, which means we never take your family's ability to afford Boston College as a factor in our decision process. And we meet the full demonstrated need um, of the students that are applying for financial aid. There are 45 partner schools. So not every partner school does this. It's only a cohort of 21 of us. Uh, private institutions around the country. Some of them may be partner schools, some of them may be not. And so you can rest assured that if, even if you're not selected for the match at BC, this doesn't mean that you might not necessarily be a competitive admit through Boston College, and it doesn't mean that you're not going to be funded financially. It just means we only have a small cohort of students that we could take through the match, um, but certainly continuing to apply through the regular decision process or the early decision two process um, certainly is, is an option. And you can still find yourself with an acceptance and still find yourself with a very generous financial aid package as well. So a question came in the chat earlier in the Q&A earlier that if BC is one of your ranked colleges and you don't get matched with BC and that we encourage you to apply early decision, regular decision. Doesn't that mean that we've essentially rejected you because we you didn't match with Boston College? Um, and what is the advantage of applying again? Certainly, this does not mean we rejected you. It just means that we had way many more qualified applicants than we had for the 50 match spots that we have committed to. And so again, applying at regular decision or early decision two certainly allows us to continue to take a large cohort of students, continues to take, you know, students, admit students through those, those application processes. So it does not mean that we don't feel that you're a good fit for BC. It just means that we had a competitive cohort of students applying for the match process and we could only take 50 of them. So understand that. For those of you who do not go on to become finalists, um, and for those of you who choose, who become finalists, but choose not to participate in the match, 
Um, you can apply to Boston College through the common application, either through early decision one, early decision two, or regular decision. Early decision one deadline date is November 1st. Early decision two deadline date is January 1st. And regular decision is also January 1st as well. You do want to be cautious with early decision because early decision, like the National College match, is a binding process, meaning that if you are admitted, you are committing yourself to enrolling, withdrawing all your other applications, and not applying to any other institutions. So we do have at the bottom of the screen bc.edu slash afford. That is a website that you can go to, and we have some tools that you can go on and input your family financial resources, and it will give you a sense as to what a financial aid package could look like for your family. If you're eight, if you do that and you you and your family look at it and you feel like this is you know doable, this is you know we could afford this, then you can take confidence in applying early decision one or early decision two. But if you want to be able to compare financial aid packages or you want to be able to be in contention for a merit scholarship, then it might not necessarily be to your advantage to apply early decision one or early decision two to Boston College. Speaking of merit scholarships, Boston College does have what's called the Gabelli Presidential Scholarship Program. It is a cohort of, of academic scholars on campus that have the added benefit of receiving a full tuition scholarship for all four years. And so we do select 18 of these students a year. In order to be considered for it, a student has to submit their application by November 1st. This does not mean you have to be an early decision one or two candidate. It just means that you have to submit, hit submit on your common application by that November 1st deadline date. A couple other things to know, um, we have some financial aid required documents. Um, the real key things to know with regards to the, the whether you're applying through the match, or you're applying through another forum, we require the FAFSA form, we require the CSS profile form, we require a copy of the family's tax returns, and those are all sent to our financial aid office. You, if you, your family owns a business or a farm, they will also be required to submit this business farm supplement. And the real big one is if any of you um, are not, um, have a, a divorce situation or you, know, you do not have both parents living together, um, you will have to submit a non-custodial parent form or a non-custodial parent waiver. Um, so these are documents that you can find if you go to bc.edu slash Questbridge, our main Questbridge site, you can find these uh, documents there. The key thing to know for those who are applying through the match, the deadline for that is November 1st. So you do need to, to get started on those relatively quickly and understand that Boston College does not utilize IDOC. A lot of the other partner schools do, but we do not. So you have to upload those documents through that financial aid upload link that's on the slide right there. Um, you can mail the forms, but mailing them directly to our, our, our post office box in New Hampshire does slow down the process considerably. So you're best off uploading them directly to that fine aid upload link. So if you need to get in touch with anyone in the financial aid office, you can see uh, there's some contact information here. Um, we have financial aid counselors assigned to students by last name. Um, so if you would like to reach out to anyone and discuss anything further or ask questions, uh, they definitely are a great resource to use. And with that, we are like just up on the hour. Um, I was not keeping track of the chat or the Q&A, so I'm not sure if there are any good questions in there that, that we want to address. I'll invite Lauren and Cindy to, to come back on. Uh, and we'll see what we might have. Yes, thank you, Danielle. There's a question here that I want to address about the supplemental essay questions and the students asking, can we use the same concept of our QuestBridge essay for the BC supplemental essay or do they have to be original? I mean, I challenge you and encourage you to make sure that you're reviewing those questions. The supplemental essay questions are very different than the questions that you're answering for the QuestBridge application or even the common application, so they have to do with BC. Even though they're not asking you verbatim why Boston College, they go back to the mission and vision of the university, the values of the university, 
the mentorship that is, exists here. Why is all of that important to you? Why do you see yourself as a, a student who can be here and contribute to the VC community and what resources at VC can help you do that? So just make sure that you're reflecting and thinking about that because I mean, bottom line, I do think that those answers are gonna be very different um, in comparison to the common application essay responses that have to do more with telling us more about you and your story to help us learn more about who you are. So we do take very close look at those essay questions because again, going back to what Danielle said, they really help us understand why Boston College is the school that you're applying to? What kind of research you've done about the university? Why are we a good fit for you and vice versa? All right. Uh, someone had asked in the in the Q and A how many students will BC choose this year. We anticipate we will also be looking for 50 scholars once again this year. Great. There's another question about, um, should we simultaneously apply for the Gabelli scholarship since it is due by November 1st? If you're going through the national college match process, you're already meeting that deadline because you're applying way earlier. Um, if you are, if you're not going through the national college match process, then you're filling out the common application. Um, make sure that you do hit submit by November 1st in order to be considered for Gabelli in that case. There's another question here from Grecia about undocumented students and work study. Um, we might have to get back to you if, you if you don't mind emailing us, we'll share our contact information on the screen um, because it really depends on your situation and some students um, who might be undocumented might also have work authorization. So um, we might have to check with our resources here at BC and get back to you. So it right. is 8.32. So two minutes beyond uh, <laughs> what we had hoped to, to have you for. So we appreciate all of you hanging in. You can see some, some sites that you can learn more, whether that's directly through our admission website or, or BC's QuestBridge specific website. Certainly the main QuestBridge page has our partner page associated with it. If you wanna reach out to students, please, we encourage you to engage with them and to ask them questions because they live this experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, certainly, if you have specific questions about the QuestBridge process, we have our QuestBridge uh, email there. And then we are thankfully welcoming visitors to campus. Uh, we have information sessions and tours going on Monday through Friday and some select Saturdays. We have opportunities to continue to engage virtually. So we have some themed programming that's going on tonight. Session is one of those themed programming, but we have sessions on you know, volunteering and sessions on campus life and sessions on residential hall life and, and dining. Um, and then we also have some opportunities where you can engage in a one-on-one -on -one chat with a BC student. So you can register through our visit page. You do a one-on-one -on -one 30 minute virtual chat with a current BC student and that gives you a nice personalized view um, into campus and into BC. So on behalf of the three of us in the Office of Undergraduate Admission and Boston College as a whole community, we wanna once again, thank you for your interest, your participation. Um, we really feel that being involved in the QuestBridge process is one of the, the greatest privileges of our, of our professional life. And so we look forward to answering your questions, engaging with you, helping you through the process, regardless of whether you, you end up as a QuestBridge finalist and apply through the match or, you don't end up as a QuestBridge finalist or you do and you choose not to apply through the match, we certainly wanna make sure that we are um, available for any questions you may have, whether BC specific, match specific or not. So always feel that you can reach out to us as a resource. We wish you all the best as you continue along with your, your decision process in terms of uh, your, your waiting process to hear about if you're a finalist and then your decision process moving forward. We hope that you all are safe and healthy, that your families are safe and healthy, and we look forward to in, engaging and interacting with you soon and look forward to reading your applications for those of you who choose to apply. So thank you so much for, for joining us. Thank, thank you, you all. Everyone. Good luck. Bye, good luck. Everyone. Have a thank good night. You.